The universal acceptance of the true Pope by heretics is impossible without God's mercy on them, 21 June, 2024 Anno Domini. Official publication of the Holy Apostolic See of Rome, in exile, by the rightful and true Sovereign Pontiff, His Holiness Pope Jacobus I, on the subject of the so-called universal acceptance of the true Sovereign Pontiff, and the various heretical and deceptive opinions of the ipso facto, and declared by the Holy See, excommunicated heretics, how their fraudulent opinions of this, to them absolutely essential, sign of validity of the papacy is directing them to falsify and thus, sacrilegiously deny the truth about it that this same universal acceptance of the true Pope by heretics is impossible without God's mercy on them and firstly their conversion to become true Catholics, as otherwise they are all, by their heresies believed, slaves of the devil and he doesn't want the true Pope to live, function and continue the true Roman Catholic Church and Catholic religion, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, nor the devil wants any new important and always infallible doctrines in matters of faith and morals to be taught and published, and Satan forces these heretical slaves of his to always reject the true Pope and then claim heretical lies that the Pope is not the Pope, but the truth remains untouched and true, by divine mercy and selection from his divine majesty God himself, Christ our Lord, of his true and real vicar on earth, the true Pope His Holiness Jacobus I, of our Lord's true divine institution Roman Catholic Church, outside of which there is absolutely no salvation. It is essential to understand the point of this recording that it is impossible to recognize the truth without being in a state of some divine grace. In fact, because God is the truth, God will not grant that spirit of understanding to those who are its enemies. That means all heretics or infidels or apostates will permit them to learn the truth on their own. But when it comes to the essential truth, to the truth of salvation, they will fail in one or two or more points. Especially when they espouse those points and, and uh, profess a heretical publications of the enemies of the church, that means the devil and his henchmen, obviously. Uh, so then it is impossible as a definition of teaching of St. Thomas Aquinas and so forth, it is in, impossible to discern the truth without being in a state of sanctifying grace. For that, you have to be truly Catholic, you have to be reconciled to the church, you have to abjure heresies, you were heretics before, you have to be received from the heresy and all the things that are following it. It means you have to go to valid confession and heretics cannot absolve. Neither can her they confer grace in the sacraments. So obviously then those who are involved in this universal recognition of non-Catholic sect as Catholic, and therefore of their null calico offices, including the papacy, they obviously are proving by the very fact that they recognize somebody who is not so much as a priest as their quote pope unquote uh, does to prove that they are heretics because they don't take care of what they profess. They don't take care that that's something that they can give consent to heretic falsehoods because papacy is also part of the revealed faith. It's recorded in the Holy Scripture, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 16, all, 16, our Lord speaks about it. Thou art beaten upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give to thee, that's why he says thee, you, Peter, and the successors, including us as a rightful servant father. I will give to thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven, which means the assistance of the Holy Ghost will be with the church, all days, even unto the consummation of the world. And whatsoever thou shalt bind, continues our Lord, upon earth shall be bound also in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be also lost in the heavens. And this is what the heretics are denying, because otherwise, how could they possibly fall into these heretical false fraudulent opinions and lies? How could they possibly accept the, the lies of the devil, which every heresy is a lie against the revealed faith and the father thereof, is the devil himself. 
if they were sincere in front of God, God would prevent them from falling into it. He would show them the truth, and they would be subject to the rightful and true sovereign pontiff. They would not fail. But these heretics are incapable of doing it. Why? Because they are subject to the devil and they are forced by him, or possessed by him rather, to do his will. And they cannot escape. And they are, it's impossible for them to escape. Impossible. The devil controls them and he will not let them go. We are showing the, the, the pictures. This is Cumex Apostolatus Officio. We will show the excerpt. And that's the teaching of the Vatican Council. And the Pope Pius IX. That's about the Countess heresy. Which these heretics are denying. We want to put it in here so that people understand that this is infallible doctrine of the church that must be obeyed in conscience without any uh, reservation or any contradiction and any deviation from it. Obviously, it has to be without any compromise. And it says this. I'll show it. Bigger. It says. That's from the uh, article on the perpetuity of the primacy of Blessed Peter and the Roman Pontiffs. That which, that which the Prince of Shepherds and Great Sheep, uh, and Great Shepherd of the Sheep, Jesus Christ our Lord, established in the person. It says in the person, not, not in the office, as the set of accountants heretics would fraudulently uh, insinuate, but in the person of the Blessed Apostle Peter to secure the perpetual welfare and lasting good of the church. To secure it. You can read the language. To secure the perpetual welfare and everlasting good of the church must, that means the person of the Pope must, by the same institution necessarily remain unceasingly in the church. That means they cannot be interregnum for, for four or five decades. That negates the very, very doctrine of this. Of course, that, uh, to possess the papacy is impossible for people who are heretics. We will show that in the, in the, the following excerpts and so forth. Uh, for none can doubt, and it is known to all ages, that the Holy and Blessed Peter, the Prince and Chief of the Apostles, the pillar of the faith and foundation of the Catholic Church, received the keys of the kingdom of heaven, of, of the kingdom from our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior and Redeemer of mankind, and lives, presides in churches to this day, always in his successors, the bishops of the Holy See of Rome, and so forth. And this is the same article, but the conclusion, the canon, if then, on the bottom, if then anyone shall say that it is not by the institution of Christ the Lord, or by divine right, that Blessed Peter has a perpetual line of successors, now then the sort of accountants heretics would like to define what the perpetual line of successors is. And they even went so far as to change the definition and change the language instead of has a perpetual line of successors, which is, which is categorical doctrine that, that cannot be substituted. This is 1907 uh, translation approved by the church. So uh, from the original Latin by uh, Father Vincent McNabb, uh, it says, has a perpetual line of successors in primacy of the universal church, or that the Roman Pontiff is not the successor of Blessed Peter in his primacy, let him be anathema, that means cursed, excommunicated. So, and then, obviously, that's cum ex apostatus officio. We will quote it here because in that excerpt, a lot of people, that's to re refute the, the, the heretics of the, who support the Novzara sect. Like this is this fraudulent, illegitimate so called order of society in Pius X, or one way or another, this fraudulent and illegitimate so called order of society in Pius V, and so forth. And their adherents and, and people who are connected with them, and so forth, the so called resistance. Uh, and so they are all in the same category of heretics. Paul the Poor, Pope Paul the Poor, uh, our process of blessed memory. Uh, 15 February 1559, Apostolic Constitution cum ex apostolatus officio, valid in perpetuity. It cannot be, this cannot be re removed and say that it was valid only back then. This is what these heretics are trying to insinuate, which is 
an utter denial of the, and it's heresy, of the, because it's, it is denial of the authority of the church and what we have just quoted from the definition of the Vatican Council. So it, there's no such thing as that uh, whatsoever thou shalt bind upon it shall be bound also in heaven. So that cannot be changed because there's a doctrine of salvation and it's bound in heaven, that means it remains as the truth of salvation and cannot be surpassed or changed, period. Because that definition is solemn. It's truly in matters of faith and morals. It's part of protection of souls. It cannot be altered. It can only be explained by future Pope in deeper sense. That's all there is. But in the same meaning and same judgment, it has to remain, that meaning has to remain, and that judgment of that sentence of that doctrine has to remain untouched. It cannot, there cannot be contradiction. A Pope, successor of the Pope, cannot contradict his predecessors in matters of faith and morals. If he does, he ceases to be the Pope and becomes heretic. He loses automatically by divine law that office. He loses that assistance of the Holy Ghost. So it says, if at point number six of this definition, cum ex, um, ex apostolatus officio means with our apostolic office, that's that's, that's how it begins, so that means that the Pope invokes, that uh, Paul IV invokes his apostolic uh, supreme teaching uh, authority uh, of the Pope, so that this is in power doctrine and has to be obeyed, and it is valid in perpetuity. And it touches on papacy, which is part of the Catholic faith, so that's teaching of the faith, as it is. If ever at any time it shall appear that any bishop, even if he be acting as an archbishop, patriarch, primate, or any cardinal of the aforesaid Roman Church, or as has been, as has already been mentioned, any legate, or even the Roman Pontiff, prior to his promotion or his elevation as cardinal or Roman Pontiff, has deviated from the Catholic faith or fallen into some heresy, the promotion or revelation, even if it shall have been uncontested, and by the unanimous assent of all the cardinals, shall be null void and worthless. It shall not be possible for it to acquire validity, nor for it to be said that it has thus acquired validity through the acceptance of the office of consecration of subsequent authority, nor through position of administration, nor through the putative enthronement of a Roman pontiff or veneration or obedience according to such by all, nor through the lapse of any period of time in the, for in the foregoing situation. And that's what it says. There's no mistake in it. it it's, it's impossible to deviate from this. So no, this is not valid only in times when these heretics decide. That's impossible. It is valid in perpetuity because why? Because it's in the doctrine of the church and Paul, Paul the fourth sign on it. And so now they are trying to, these heretics are one, of, one or another are attacking this teaching because they would like to make it look like it's no longer binding in conscience. And thus, it cannot be contradiction. There cannot be anything that would surpass it and contradict it, period. That's why it says, cum ex apostolatus officio. No heretic can ever sit on the chair of St. Peter, on the seat of St. Peter, and be the be valid folk, ever. If that was possible, that would be a heresy, a denial of the divine promise of Christ our Lord that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Because if a heretic would be sitting on the chair of St. Peter, the devil would control the church through that heretic, obviously, which is impossible to happen. So that's just to inform people who watch this, our publication today, that where constraints are, that there's no deviation from it. Because there are constraints of the canon law, which are even more serious, uh, that's one of them, Canon 2314, 1917, Code of Canon Law. All heretics are excommun all, it's excommunication uh, reserved to the Holy See Speciali Modo. And it's ipso facto, we fall all apostates from the Christian faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, all heretics and schismatics. And this is that they must abjure the heresy canon 731. And this is that they lose automatically their clerk office by way of tacit resignation. 
and that's that's Canon 188 point number four. The office of the cleric becomes vacant by way of tacit resignation, that means automatic re resignation of the office, by the force of law, if so right says, yes, and by the fact that the act is committed, if so facto, without any declaration, sine ula declaratione, that's underlined in the center. If a cleric, and point number four, that's highlighted in blue, has publicly defected from the Catholic faith. So, alongside with the Apostolic Constitution, Cum ex Apostolus Officio, in power doctrine, barred in perpetuity. No, this is another that they lose. The cardinals, that happens, we have explained this in our previous recordings, so we don't need to go through all this. But just to illustrate to those who will not follow this, our doctrine, uh, the heretics, obviously, that uh, to illustrate that they are away from the truth and that by attacking the church, these enemies in 19, early 1960s, like Ron Kali and his followers, they lost their clerk offices, including those who were attempt, who attempted then elect his successor when Ron Kali died in 1963, and they already been heretics because they, had, by their silence to these changes, invalid. Because Ron Kali promulgated uh, uh, Pontificale Romanum in 1962, prior to assembling into this, uh, we call it Second Vatican Gathering of Heretics, because it did, by then they lost their clerk offices, so that there was never such council in the church. There was not valid council of the church. There was only, in the history of the church, one council of the Vatican. That was under our predecessor of blessed memory of Pius IX. 1869 to 1870 Anno Domini. That's the only one that was ever in the Vatican, as, as it is in the, uh, under the title of Vatican, I guess. So, uh, we will go to the excerpts uh, and, and show the, 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 uh, show the defects and the perverse, perversity of these heretics as they claim to possess the truth and they do not and what that fraudulent argument of the universe how it is taken out of context and how that argument is truly uh, destroying their uh, is, is truly not not anywhere near the truth is just truly absolutely invalid the ipso facto and declared by the holy see excommunicated set of acantists slash set deprivationist heretic donald j sanborn here proving that he is in his heretical false conclusions and opinions serving his master the devil quite successfully. Stay away as far as possible, the pains of hell are otherwise the only outcome. The Catholic faith is absent from what you call Catholic churches today. Proof of that is, again I cite Bishop Barron, 70% of people who call themselves Catholics do not believe in the real presence of Christ. Why did that happen? How did that happen? They go to Mass every Sunday, in the new Mass, and they see how the priest treats the Blessed Sacrament, uh, and how he hands it out to people, and, and how and they the treat it. Extraordinary ministers. The, all just even very conservative Novus Ordo Masses. The, it, there is no idea that, that what is on the altar is the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ, who is God. So you have seen it. The ex all just even very conservative Novus Ordo Masses. The, it, there is no idea that that, what is on the altar. He says it right here. There is no sense what is on the altar. Is the body and blood. So this is, this is heresy what he says. That's a, that's, a, that's a horrifying heresy and abomination, blasphemy, in fact, because that's a Protestant reenactment of the Last Supper, which they have, and therefore there's no holy sacrifice of the Mass. So no, there is no such thing as body of Christ and blood of Christ on, the, on that table that they have, that Protestant table. So this is, this is horrifying abomination of this heretic, which is conf confirming the fact that the Holy Ghost is not with him, that the true bishop of the church will never be able to say something like this. And then, that's not, that's not a mask, that's a mockery of God, and the person is not a priest.
they have nothing to believe because there's nothing in them nothing in them what is catholic this this this, this not that's that's not catholic ceremony it's troy ceremony that was instituted by luther arch heretic himself and the same word what he says well i did play and, and comment on it he calls novus out a sectarian as bishop this didn't work and there's no such thing we don't have old mass and new that, no, no such thing because that would imply that there is two faiths and therefore two ways of uh, that could be uh, accepted at least by them without any impunity any any punishment from God or being become, without becoming heretics of uh, new sacrament of Hol uh, Holy Eucharist but that's not possible to be done so no this in fact is also opening the door for heresy no such thing exists they don't have blessed sacrament they don't have they cannot be that term cannot be used in there that's just a piece of bread and wine and chalice that's it so uh, this is horrifying abomination what is enemy of the church is saying what do you call Catholic churches today no that's a non-catholic sect and they don't have that's not part of they are by the virtue of that very fact that they are we'll say right here and, and uh, on his face right there they are excommunicated so they cannot be called Catholic that's the canon law that excommunicated them by virtue that they are outside the church they are excommunicated there's no way for them to be called Catholic in order to be reconciled with the church they have to observe the heresy it says right here it is forbidden to minister the sacraments of the church to heretics and schismatics even though they are in good faith and ask for them unless they have first renounced their errors and been reconciled to the church canon 731 1917 code of canon law evidently this heretic does not follow the canon law because how could he he would he's subject to it and he would be called heretic so Obviously, he doesn't want that to happen, to be called heretic, but he is heretic. We have declared him heretic, he's excommunicated and named Vitandus. That means the higher degree, no one is allowed to communicate with such people. They don't believe in the real presence because they don't have it. They don't see it. It does not exist in their sectarian neo-protestant assemblies that's not the body of christ so there's no way to insinuate it but to open the door like this how could they possibly believe in it but that that protestant reenactment of an heretical idolatrous reenactment of the last supper these people are not catholic they must never be called catholic because it's a non-catholic sect and they are all excommunicated they cannot say be saved and they all if they since all those who died in that horrible novice of the sect all burn in hell without any exception because they cannot absolve themselves and they don't have authority to absolve themselves or to lift the on the external form the the censure of uh of excommunication obviously or that's for the old ones or to be accepted from heresy uh, because these heretics cannot admit them into the church because they themselves are outside the church by by the very fact that they are heretics He says, he said it right here, there's no idea that what is on the altar is, and then he says this. Which means that he's, he's actually saying it explicitly. 
this horrifying enemy of the church. He's saying explicitly, that's why we used it in, in this in this excerpt. We are waiting for that. So this is this is there, this is the outcome of heresy. What this heretic is saying. This is horrifying abomination. It's full so full. That's why that inscription above us is there for this heretic to be visible. The heretics and their deceptive conclusions regarding the so-called universal acceptance of the papacy as valid by the Catholic faithful, which in this case is a grossly misleading path by which these heretics deceive when they willfully fail to properly define who and how many the actual Catholic faithful are, so that they can universally accept the Pope, or shall it be said, the heretics those who frequent all these fraudulent illegitimate assemblies of the SSPX, SSPXMC, SSPV, and the set of Acantist heretics and the apostate sectarians of the neo-Protestant sect Novus Ordo, themselves being blinded by the heresies believed and thus forced by their master the devil to so-called universally accept the Novus Ordo apostate sectarian as the quote valid Pope unquote. In the second part of the response, Messrs. Salsa and Sisko attempt to refute the Sativacontist argument that, due to public heresy, the Vatican II popes could not have been true popes in the first place. The Sativacontist argument here is based on canonists such as Vernz Vidal, Coronata, Badius, Cochi, and Sipos, who teach that as a matter of divine law, certain classes of people cannot be validly elected Pope. These include the unbaptized, women, those under the age of reason, the habitually insane, and public schismatics and heretics. We've quoted these canonists in previous articles and videos, so we need not do so here again. In their latest article, Messrs. Salsa and Sisko do not even attempt to address the specific principles these canonists lay down. To address this, he's quoting of the, uh, of the book of these laymen who are tied or were tied, it used to be tied with the Society of St. the Ten Heretics. Of course, these laymen have no authority to pass judgment on matters of uh, magisterial uh, uh, what belongs to the magisterial authority of the church, that's why the inscription below us is there. He's not saying that, he's giving them open door, instead of saying they publish this book and it's not permitted for laymen to make these kind of, to publish some, these kind of books. Bernard Pillay of the SSPX have written forward for this book that's supposed to be 700 pages by our apostolic authority forbid those who want to be true Catholic, who want to be admitted into the church, they are not permitted to obtain this book, to have this book, and to read this book. Because it will violate the constraints of true canon law. These are heretics. It's canon 2322, or 2318, rather. Uh, we've shown this before. It's right here. It's in the center. Publishers of books. Uh, written by apostates, heretics, and, and schismatics, and so forth, and, and, and so forth, you can, you can see it. So, oh, I'll leave that, leave that in there. So then, uh, it is impossible for people to obtain this book without committing more to sin of heresy, because that's denial, that would be denial of the authority of the church. Laymen cannot write things without the supervision of the church and moreover on matters that belong to the decision of the magisterial decision of the church in matters of papacy whether one person is valid pope or not they cannot pass judgment on it they are not permitted to do so that belongs to the authority of the church and of course if they recognize non-catholic sect as catholic and grant them the authority and they are outside the church as heretics so then catholic faith will not permit it those who are truly Catholic, 
I'm very free today. Uh, I'm not permitted to obtain this book, to read this book, to read any part of it, to even engage in any kind of examination of this book without due permission of the Holy See, which they will, they will never, ha never have, because this book contains so many her heresies that it's impossible for us to even go through it. And why should we? Because it addresses things, a, a, a matter of doctrine that is already defined by the church to begin with. So, uh, and by divine law and constraints of the faith and canon law and so forth. So there's, there's no need for us. We have just explained this in the beginning of our recording today, our publication. So there's no need. What he says, this heretic Chicago, in this is that he's not, is, what is essential is that he's omitting to explain this point we have just explained. That not only that it's not permissible to, to obtain this book, to read this book, which is forbidden by this very canon here, but uh, under the pain of excommunication, special, special reserve to the Holy See, to our judgment as it is, as a right of sovereign front. But also, it is not permitted for laymen, even if they, if even if these two people that they wrote this book were in in uh, good standing with the church, they would still not be permitted to write something like this because that truly belongs to the side to write to teach to the Holy See and or to those who are authorized. That means the clerical state of the church, the true priests and bishops and so forth. It has to be approved by the church uh, for publication. Has to be imprimatur, and he holds that in the book, so that it was approved that that, that, that that does not contain heretical errors, which is all of the church that remains. So it cannot be done without that. Of course, uh, what this Chicago is saying, he goes, he goes back and forth. And he he permits them to pass judgment on these matters without explaining. That they are not even permitted to do this. But this is not permitted for laymen to write something like this. Or to try to refute somebody who claims to be a priest, that's to prove that he does not value his, which he doesn't have, that's to prove that he himself is outside the church and does not possess the kaiko title nor dignity of the priesthood. We have demonstrated that in our previous recordings. Why is it so? Because where he was, what they were using for, for uh, at, at SSPX, where he was so-called ordained in 1970s by a heretic already, Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, so there's not evidently the grace of sacrament of holy orders is not in him because otherwise he would be instructed by the holy ghost himself not to go through all this but to condemn this book and to say that they are not permitted to write something else that that's already illustrating that the sspx are heretics because if since they permitted a lot members of the their laity so-called laity to publish things in matters of doctrinal and canonical uh, levels and importance, including matters of theological opinions on matters of valid papacy or not, that in itself demonstrates that they are nothing more than, than just like the Novus Ordo sect. That, um, as well start going to Bible studies as the Protestants and that we will demonstrate exactly what, what this is. Because this amounts to that in a principle as it is. Which that's not Catholic, obviously, and they are outside the church. By the way, canon you see, you see right here. Well, Pacific recognition, they claim, establishes the papacy of a Vatican II pope as a dogmatic fact, and it is therefore infallibly certain that the person chosen is the pope. Sede Vacantis are therefore schismatics, Father Chicada is guilty of mortal sin, etc., etc., etc. Second, to support their contention that a public heretic can be validly elected a true pope, thanks to universal peaceful recognition by the entire church, Messer Sol San Sisko quote large chunks from the writings of the Dominican theologian John of St. Thomas. But appealing to John of St. Thomas on universal peaceful recognition to validate the election of a heretic as pope, is the one thing that Messrs. Salsa and Cisco cannot do. So, why is it so? Because, and not only because of this, we have already read what it means in that, uh, the Comex Apostolus Officio, but uh, 
he's saying cannot do because of the, they, they don't have authority to do any of this, period. Because they are members of the laity, they don't belong in the church, they are heretics. It's like Protestants assembled in the study writing about matters of the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church Magisterium. That's, that's exactly what it is. He's not even saying that, that they cannot be addressing uh, teaching of a theologian who would, if he contradicted teaching of the Pope, in the doctrine of the Pope, that he himself would cease to be theologian, he would be excommunicated heretic. Even at that time, and that was always like this. Man who is a heretic, so simple, after first or second admonition, avoid. And he's condemned by his own uh, doctrine and so forth. So we'll let it play a little, a little more because uh, it, it's very important that uh, this is understood correctly, what he says next. Law and force at the time he was writing, cum ex apostolatus officio of Paul IV, rendered such an election invalid, even with the unanimous consent of the cardinals and the obedience accorded the heretic pope by all. While traditionalists may dispute whether or not cum ex apostolatus still applies now, there is no question that it was in force when John of St. Thomas was writing. So, this is essential proof, and you can read it, but we will explain again. This is essential proof that this set of Arcantus heretic, Anthony Chicada, who's paying for his heresies in hell, because he already died, and they cannot absolve themselves, heretics cannot absolve. Uh, we have shown that before. Let's, let's go there. Uh, that's important, because we don't want to deprive them on the benefit of uh, the truth, obviously. So, uh, we have it somewhere here. That's teaching of St. Thomas Aquinas. That's right here. The effect of absolution is nothing, nothing else but the forgiveness of sins which results from grace. And consequently, that's in the yellow in the center. Uh, consequently, a heretic cannot absolve as neither can he come for grace in the sacraments. And by the very fact you communicate in the sacraments with the heretic, with God of the church, you sin and you cannot obtain grace in a sacrament. So for the purpose of legitimizing a heretical pope, his comments on universal recognition must be treated as moot. To further advance their contention that the Vatican II popes were true popes because of universal pacific recognition by the whole church, Messrs. Salsa and Sisko quote the eminent 20th century theologian Louis Cardinal Billot. The adherence of the universal church, says Billot, would be always and by itself an infallible sign of the legitimacy of the person of the pontiff. Otherwise, he explains, the gates of hell would prevail and the promise of Christ to be with his church all days would not be fulfilled. So they are taking it out of context, obviously. Because not only that these sort of conscious heretics are heretics because of that what we have demonstrated in the first place in the beginning of this our publication today, but that these who recognize non catholic sect, they don't take into context the fact that they have to first, in order to have that ability, they have to have the guidance of the Holy Ghost in them. That means God has to guide them to make the proper discernment of the truth. And they don't possess it. Heretics cannot possibly possess it because then heresy would no longer be heresy. That's why St. Thomas Aquinas teaches in the doctrine, it is impossible to discern the truth without being in a state of sanctifying grace. In other words, that's the confirmation of the Holy Scripture. St. Paul says, the Holy Ghost who dwelleth in you. Which means, that's why it has become its saints. That means when people become truly Catholic, that's in the sense of the, how is meant the word saint in, in, that, in that language of the Holy Scripture. It, in this case, it means truly to be truly Catholic. That means that they go to valid confession. They are validly absolved of their sin, and then God will grant them the grace of understanding of what the truth is, to be able to discern it from the error and heresies and so forth, upon the guidance and teaching of the church. 
not that the laymen will invite themselves to make that discernment themselves, but they will understand the teaching of the church, and they will understand that, yes, that's the true sovereign pontiff, that's the doctrine that they need to hear and obey and follow. And what these heretics are insinuating, what he's quoting, that's his error already, but this is at least teaching of uh, canon of the church, this is uh, from that time back, so, uh, and it's absolutely true, but they're taking out of context and granting the name of Catholic to non-Catholic sect. So, and he's not, what this heretic, heretic Chikara is not saying is the proof that he is the heretic himself, because he omits the essential part. Uh, he has to teach it, he's obligated to teach it, that evidently those who do not belong with the church, who do not practice the Catholic faith, do not they cannot assemble and start having this universal recognition. But grace will not be granted by God because that results from grace, from divine grace to be able to see the truth, to obtain the, uh, the grace of understanding from Christ our Lord, to be able to recognize who his true vicar is. And because they're recognizing non-Catholic sect as Catholic, and they recognizing a person who's not so much as a priest, based on his biography and so forth, where he was so-called ordained, it was 1969, as Bergoglio biography, and they call him, we don't even want to say it here. Uh, that's to prove that they are heretics, and therefore they don't have the guidance of the Holy Ghost in them. Holy Ghost does not dwell in their souls. They recognizing non catholic set as horrifying abomination and heresy. They are recognizing non Catholic set as in possession of the authority of the church. That's not possible for, for members of the church to do for true Catholics. Because we don't have two Catholic faiths in the, in, the, in the church. And we don't have two Catholic churches. St. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 and 5, one body and one spirit. And he calls, uh, speaks about calling us, your calling and so forth. And then he says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So there's no, there's just one faith, that's Catholic tradition, and one church teaching, and that's Catholic church, divine institution. Of course, the promise of the assistance of the Holy Ghost is not granted to heretics to teach the truth. They will never teach the truth. There will always be the heresy which they espouse, and that is doctrine of the devils. And St. Paul says, I, I will not have you uh, be with the devils. You cannot sit at the table of God and drink uh, eat, uh, eat of the devil of God and the devil of the devil. So you cannot drink the chalice of God, the chalice of the devil. So it's, it's self-evident that when they attempt to recognize non-Catholic say as Catholic, that they come in more to sin of heresy, they are outside of the church, and obviously they cannot and do not possess this universal recognition, grace of God that will otherwise lead them to recognize the truth and follow it. And it's, another record, uh, it's recorded in another place in, in the Holy Scripture. And they shall, our Lord speaks about this, our Lord himself says, those who uh, love God, they, they know my voice and that they, and so forth. Those who are mine, they know my voice. They recognize that that's truly the truth. And those who do not belong with God, they do not recognize it. And the devil is their master. Of course. But when you put Bio's reasons as to why this is so, beside the reality of how all traditionalists actually treated Paul VI and his successors, you not only defeat the Salsa Cisco SSPX argument against Sedevacantism, this is so because Bio teaches that the whole church must necessarily, one, adhere to a true pope as the living rule of faith, and two, obey him. As regards the first point, Bio explains, for it would be the same thing for the church to adhere to a false pope, as it would be to adhere to a false rule of faith. Since the pope is the living rule, which the church must follow in believing, and always, in fact, follows. Conversely, it follows that if the church rejects a putative pope as the living rule of faith, it is likewise necessarily rejecting him as a true Roman pontiff. 
since his legitimacy and his status as the living rule of faith are two things which are essentially bound together. You can't have one without the other. It is evident that yes, the set of accounts have valid arguments, but this is not the essence of the truth as it is, or why is it so? The essence is who these people are, what they profess, and the sacraments, including most of all, the Protestant heretical reenactment of the Last Supper, which is not a mass. They don't honor God, they, they mock Him, and they actually neo-Protestant, pro-communist, non-Catholic sect, and also recognize the horrible sect of Satan as Catholic, they are guilty of sacrilege, and excommunicated, and we have excommunicated them by apostolic, uh, by our papal bull on that subject of excommunication. In May uh, uh, 2021, Anno Domini, so we don't have to go too far, it's truly uh, addressed by the church already, so they are named as Vitandus, these heretics, and uh, those who died in such a state of their soul, they, they, they paying for it forever in hell, including this Chicago. And uh, evidently they don't fear God's punishment, because otherwise they would not be teaching these horrible things, and they would reject them. But it's for us, as the right of sovereign pontiff, it's an honor not to be recognized by heretics. We would actually fear something's wrong if heretics who are not reconciled with the church or don't seek to be reconciled with the church are not recognizing us, are, are recognizing us. Because then we would fear that something is wrong, and, but that cannot possibly happen. God will not grant them the grace. And if they do recognize us, is probably only for deception, the enemies of the church to seek personal information and uh, uh, for the purpose of uh, trying to destroy the church, serving the devil, which has happened before. We have just had recently a case of spying involvement of uh, one of these heretics. And so, uh, uh, so it's, it's not isolated incident or anything, but just the fact that they don't see the truth, they, they don't understand it, is, is the fact enough that they themselves are outside the church, they don't possess the guidance of the Holy Ghost, and they do not have the truth in them. God will not grant them the spirit of understanding. They will not be able to recognize and be able to discern the truth. Therefore, they recognizing none. They are capable of recognizing that's the devil himself in them, forcing them into these horrifying states of their soul and leading them to their, their utter ruin which is horrifying and for us a very sad thing to watch, but uh, unless they reject uh, what they believe, those heresies that they believe as a spouse, and unless they will seek actively to be reconciled with the church to, or to become for the first time in their lives Catholics uh, upon the abjuration of heresies and being uh, addressing the Holy See, addressing us for our consideration and obviously to be present what their case really is in, in matters of what they believe, whom they belong to and so forth, what they were professing. All these things have to be mentioned. And that's not some over the internet thing. They have to be actively helping the church in order for us to continue our divine mission, divinely granted mission, uh, given mission of uh, salvation of souls. So we have such, we have had such instances of people who thought that they would just obtain sacraments and that they will not lift a finger to help the church to continue. And right now we are being persecuted as it is by the devil and his henchmen, by these heretics, because they lure into their assemblies people who would otherwise be Catholic and God is not converting them because they are not willing to abjure that heresy, to give it up, to leave that fraudulent, uh, horrifying uh, opinions that, that actually pernicious and that they don't live anywhere else but the hell and uh, then there's no, 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 no possibility of, of reconciling them. So to conclude this, our publication today, uh, we would like to admonish those who still 
somewhat are sincere or seek the truth yet have not yet attained it and attain to that, that they will see by the very teaching of this Holy See, by what we publish, what he direct our sermons and all this, the guidance that God grants us. Otherwise that we would not be able to publish these things to expose the heretics to have the clarity of understanding in us. But that the Holy Ghost is leading us to it and that surely God is with this truth. That it's our doctrine that we uh, command to be practiced and professed not because it comes from us as our person but because that doctrine comes by the assistance of God himself to us who has promised to be with his church all days even unto the consummation of the world therefore not that we would seek to be eloquent or any other but for the good of the soul and for conversion as their salvation that we worry that all such souls will perish if they continue uh, and obviously that will be the, the outcome if they continue in their houses we're trying to help them for the love of our lord and for uh, their salvation out of charity but those who will not hear our voice they will have to answer to god those who do not wish to learn from these our publications that you that what we have published on the subject of these heretics that all of it is true and that it all is based on the law of the church and doctrine the false doctrine of the church and that cannot be set aside or negated or compromised on or denied and also attempt to do so to deny it or negate it or mock us and, and other such like things as happens quite often and so forth they will have to answer to God that we don't want them to be punished. We want them to convert to men to be true Catholic. Again, for the, to fulfill our obligation and duty of our office, our apostolic office, as the right and true summing pontiff of the, Roman, of the Roman Catholic Church. And that we have non Catholic sect occupying the Vatican with communist connections left and right and so forth. That's self evident truth for several decades now. And uh, so those who recognize this horrible sect of Satan as Catholic. They will pay to God for it in hell if they die in such a state of their soul. That should suffice today. This dogma divinely revealed outside the Roman Catholic Church, the true Catholic Church, which is today represented solely and only by this Holy Apostolic See of Rome in exile. Outside the same church, this universal Roman Catholic Church, and without practice of the Catholic faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, there's absolutely no salvation. All heretics, infidels, or apostates or enemies of the church, like the communist, socialist, atheists, and so forth, all will burn in hell, do burn in hell, they die in such a state of their soul. The divine reckoning is near, the divine punishment. And also neglect of those who will not hear our voice and obey us in this, and to strive to convert and strip themselves of that yoke of Satan, they will have to answer to God for it, for their neglect, or for their denial, for a refusal, that's obstinate refusal to be Catholic. And it is not possible to be Catholic with heretics, it is not possible to be Catholic within the bosom of this horrifying non Catholic apostate sect called non sort of sect of Satan that Satan installed and is run by people who are all without any exception on the way to hell.